All right, so what is up guys? Welcome to the final part of our MVVM habit tracker tutorial. And in this video, we will be taking care of the view pager that will act as an introduction screen for the user so they can find out how to use this app before they actually start using it. And inside the UI package, we are going to click on the intro screen or we're going to right click on it. We're going to click new and we're going to create a new empty activity. And we're just going to name it intro activity. And we do want it to generate a layout file, so that is perfect. And we will click on finish. And as soon as the class has been generated, we can go to our res folder and edit the XML. So we'll click on the layout folder and we will click on activity intro. And just as I did for everything else earlier, we are going to go to my GitHub repository, the Habit Tracker 2020. And that is in the description below. So you're more than welcome to click on that link. And we're gonna click on app. Then we need to go to the source file. Then we need to go to our main file. Then we need to click on res and inside res we'll click on layout and inside here we'll have the activity underscore intro XML. Then we will click on raw and we're just going to copy all of this, which isn't that much. Apparently it's just a button, a circle indicator and an image view. So we're just going to do this. And the only thing we want to change in here is the color of the circle indicator. So right here you'll see it says background for the circle indicator and we're just going to change this to our primary color. So I'm gonna type add color and we're gonna do add color primary. And just to explain what I did in here, as you can see, we have a view pager two, that is the whole layout. Then we have a circle indicator, which is this part down here. And that will take care of telling the user which page they're on. And then we have a button, which will start the app. And this is called button underscore start app. And you can't really see it on the screen because I put the visibility to gone. So we'll just set that to visible so you can understand what we will be working with. And we need to set the alpha to one as well. So that's the button that will appear when the user navigates to the final screen of the view pager. And until then it will just be invisible. So that's why I set it to zero at the alpha and I set it to gone. And that's all you need to know about this layout over here. Then we can close this res folder and go to our main activity because we need to set up a few lines of code that tells the program to navigate to this screen if it's the user's first time. And if it's not the user's first time, it will just skip this screen and go straight to the application. So the first thing we're gonna write in here is private var user first time. And that's going to be set to true. Then we need to set up a check, which will say if it's the user's first time, we will set user's first time to false. And we need to save that data so that the program will remember that it has been set to false. And then we want to start an intent, which will open our intro activity. So value I is going to equal intent, and that's gonna take this as the context, and let's import intent. And we want to navigate to our intro activity class.java. Then we need to call start activity, and we're gonna enter our intent. And then we want to call finish, so we can't navigate back to this when we are in our intro screen, because that would be a very weird user experience. And also before we do this check, we need to load the data that will tell us whether this Boolean is true or false. So we're gonna create a function called load data. And right under this overridden function, we can create these two functions. So the first one's gonna be a private function save data, and that's gonna be a shared preference. So we're gonna do value SP equals get shared preferences and we're just gonna name it shared underscore prefs, and we're gonna give it a mode of private. Then we're gonna write sp edit dot apply, and inside this block, we just need to put the state of the Boolean. So we're gonna type in put Boolean. We're gonna give it a value of Boolean first time, and this is going to be the key value, so it will tell us which name to look for when we want to retrieve that value. And we're gonna insert the user first time, which will now be false and it will always be false from here on out. And we need to call apply. So that will take care of saving the data, but that's not enough because we need to load the data so the program knows that it should use this value that we have inserted instead of this value over here. And to do that, we need to create our private function load data, which is going to just take this same value of shared preferences from above. And right below that, we're gonna type in user first time is going to equal sp.getBoolean. And just to make sure we use the same one, we're just gonna copy and paste this string and we're gonna give it a default value of true. And that will take care of everything we need to do in our main activity class. Next, we have to go to our intro screen folder and click on new Kotlin file class because we need to create an adapter for our view pager. And we're just gonna call it view pager adapter. And the first thing we have to do in here is add a parameter to our view pager adapter. And it's gonna be one that's called intro views of type 
list, which will be of type intro view. And if you don't remember where we got this from, you can find it right in our models folder. As you can see right there, we have an intro view and that holds a description and an image ID. So let's go back to our view page adapter and continue. And this is going to extend the recycler view dot adapter. And we also need to write in the angle brackets view pager adapter dot intro view holder. And we will create this view holder immediately under. And don't forget to include the parentheses. Then we'll type in class intro view holder. And that's going to take an item view as a parameter of type view, which we should import. And that's going to return a recycler view dot view holder with the item view inside. Then we can also implement the members that are required for our recycler views. And that is on create, on bind and get item count. For on create, we're just going to return an intro view holder. And that's gonna take a layout inflator, which will inflate from the parent dot context. And then we need to call dot inflate and we need to inflate the layout that we've created for this view pager. So r.layout.intro underscore item. And we need to import the r first so that we can call this intro underscore item page. And if you look in our layout folder, you'll see that the intro item page will just be a simple image view with a description text under. But of course, right after that, we need to include parent and attach to root will be set to false. Then we can just tidy that up so it fits on the screen. And then right before the intro view holder class, we need to create a private value called list, which is going to be a list of intro views. And then in the get item count, we can type in return list dot size. And finally, we need to just write in a few lines of code to display the information that we've retrieved from the list. So we're going to type in value current view, and that's going to equal a list at the position of position. Then we can type in holder dot item view dot image view underscore image intro dot set image resource. And that's going to equal current view dot image ID. Then we're going to type in holder dot item view dot TV underscore description intro dot text. And that's going to equal the current view dot description. And that will take care of everything that we need to do to make our view pager function correctly. Then the final thing we have to do is go to our intro activity and add the final lines of code, which will allow our intro activity to know what it has to do. So the first thing we need to create in our intro activity is a late in it var, which is going to be called intro view. And that's going to be a list of intro view. Then we're going to create a function that's called add to intro view. And we also want to set up the view pager two adapter. So we're going to type in view pager two dot adapter is going to equal view pager adapter. And inside there, you want to insert the intro view. Then we also need to type view pager two dot orientation. And we want to set that to view pager two dot orientation horizontal. And we also want to add some code that tells us which page we're on. And to do that, all we have to do is refer to our view pager two. And we're going to write register on page change callback. And inside here, we need to create an object, which will be of type view pager two dot on page change callback. And then we need to create a block. And the first thing we're going to do inside here is override on page scrolled. And we're going to pick this one right here that gives us a position, a position offset and a float. And the only thing we have to do inside here is add an if statement, which will tell us if we are at the final page, we want to show the button that will navigate the user to the main screen. And to do this, we'll just type in if position is equal to two, then we will create another function that's going to be called animation button. And this will be triggered, which means we will be able to see a button which will allow us to go to our main activity. And also just to explain real quickly why I picked the number two. This is because we will have three screens in total in our view pager. And as you may have guessed in programming, a lot of indexes start at zero. So page one will be zero, page two will be one and page three will be number two. And I just want to clarify this because in case you want to add some more pages to your view pager, you are going to have to modify this number accordingly. So if you have four pages in your view pager, you want to set this number to three. But up next, we're going to get out of this on create method and right under we are going to create a private function that's called animation button. And the first thing we want to do is type in button starts app dot visibility and we're going to set that to view dot visible. Then we're also going to refer to that button start app and we want to animate it. 
then we just have to call dot apply and inside here we will add some animations. So the first thing we want to do is set the duration to 1400 milliseconds and you can change this to whatever you want. I just found it looked good at that number and we want to set the alpha to 1f. So it will go from zero to 100% visibility. Then we just want to make sure that we can actually do something with this button. So we're gonna type in button start app, set on click listener. And we're gonna create another intent in here. So value i equals intent. And that is gonna take the application context and it's going to navigate us to the main activity class.java. Then we just need to start this activity and pass in the intent and make sure to call finish so that we won't be able to navigate back to this screen as soon as the user has finished. And then for the animation to show, it's very important that you call dot start and that will take care of showing the button when the user navigates to the final screen of the view pager. And now the final function we have to add to make this project work is the one that we're missing up here, which is add to intro view. And we just need to create a list of items to be displayed in the view pager. So to do this, we'll type in private function add to intro view and this intro view is going to be a list of and inside here we just have to provide a list of intro views so to do this we'll just type in intro view and the first argument that it is expecting is a description so we'll just type in welcome to habit tracker and then it wants an image resource so we'll just type in r.drawable and we will set it to rt icon but of course you can set whatever image you want and then we will create another intro view and inside here, I'm just going to create some dummy text. So this is the second page. And we will pass in a different drawable. So we'll do r.drawable.ic smoking. And then the final intro view, which is going to say this is the final page. And then I'm just going to pass in r.drawable.ic fast food. So this will create the list of items we want to display in our view pager. And you can add more or you can take some away. It's up to you actually, but uh, for this app, this is how I decided to do it. And with that being said, let's go ahead and run the program and see how this app works. So as you can see, it has loaded and we have made it to the intro screen and you can navigate to the right and you can continue navigating there. And on the final screen, you will get the button which will appear at the bottom. And if you go back, it will always be there. So the user can just click on it and start the activity with ease. And if we try to back navigate, it will just take us out of the app. But there was one bug that I just noticed and I would like to fix, and that is the bottom navigation indicator did not appear. And to fix this bug, all we need to do is go up to our onCreate method because I absolutely forgot to add this. And this is the circle indicator. And we just need to set which view pager it's going to count the views for. And of course that view pager is going to be the view pager too. And then since we already navigated to the activity the first time, this intro screen is not gonna show up again because we have defined some logic that will tell the program not to show this screen again. And to make it so we can actually test that the intro screen is working properly, we're gonna have to add an exclamation mark here, which means this is always gonna be false from now on and the intro screen will always appear. So let's go ahead and click on the replay button. And as you can see this time at the bottom, we have the circle indicator. So everything is working beautifully and smoothly. And the only problem that you will encounter when testing it is that when you click on start making new habits, it will take you to the same intro screen. That is because our logic here has provided us a loop that we cannot exit. So this will only work the first time the user actually enters the app. So let's just remove that exclamation mark and rerun the program. So as you can see, our shared preferences remembered that we already navigated to the intro screen once, so it will never allow us to go there again. And that's great, the user won't get annoyed. So now we can go ahead and add one more habit to make sure everything works correctly. We're gonna say uh, quit smoking again. And yes, again, and let's say we just decided to quit smoking at two in the afternoon. So we'll just say 14, we will add the no smoking sign. So as you can see, it has been 21 hours since we tried to smoke. And if you refresh the page, it will give you the most recent times. And for hours that might take a long time, but if you had the app open for an entire hour and you refresh down, this should change to 22. And let's pretend we don't really care about eating salad anymore. Let's go and delete that. Everything's working perfectly. And yeah, we have successfully finished creating this habit tracking app. And, and if there are any other kind of apps you would like me to create or any other kind of components you would like me to 
look into, please leave it in the comment section below. I won't promise that I will make it, but I will definitely look into it. And if it's interesting enough, or if it's easy enough to produce videos about, you might see that video fairly soon. But as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. See you.